Hi, Ted here again. I've uh, been using the shop smith. As you can see in the background, uh, I still have a problem with the uh, spindle. I've ordered some bearings for it, which I should get in in a couple of days. We'll see. And, uh, you know, I listen to people like Scott with my growth rings and uh, a couple other people that are really knowledgeable. I've had a lot of help on this situation, but I've ordered a style indicator, and I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, set it up and uh, see just how bad this thing really is and then I'll open it up and see what's making all the sounds and noises that I've been listening to which I don't think should be there so and I hope somebody from ShopSmith or some of you users that own the PowerPro will tell me hey that's normal or hey mine doesn't do that I need a little help here it's right about to say old folks old dogs can't learn new tricks I try and I ask questions, and if you ask questions, you get answers, and that's the way to go. So, we'll be back. Okay, I set this up. I turned it off because I thought I was filming, and it wasn't. As you can see, I've been working. I've made a couple of lathe handles, actually four of them. Uh, this one has the clue device in it, Jimmy Clue. I guess that's how I pronounce his name. He spells it so weird, but that's he's from a weird place. So while I'm waiting for this thing to spool up, I'd like to show you something. One of the things about ShotSmith that it doesn't have is the ability to lock itself when you need to take something off like the school the screw screwdrive. So that does this. Even if I move it around a little bit, I can undo it. But here's another thing I'm kind of curious about. This is locked now. It's not going anywhere. There's no, there's a little bit of slop in it. But I'm going to do this. I'm going to try and hold it. See if you can hear that. My left hand is holding that from moving, so there's, I don't know how much, just a couple degrees. But it is floppy. So at 500 RPM, you can hear the slack as it picks up. I don't know if that's with the belt or what it is. Now let's go to 1300, 1350, I'm still 500, hang loose a second, 1350. Finally knew how to work this thing. That was a noise I wanted to hear though. So 1350, usually you don't have to confirm. 1350 ready to run. There it goes. Kind of sounds like a coffee grinder. And I can see the vibration on this thing. But I'm not sure why I'm seeing it. But I am. So I'm making this video so hopefully people that own the ShopSmith Power Pro will say, hey, everything you're looking at right now, mine does that too. Or you can say, hey, mine doesn't do any of that. Or, hey, mine used to do that before I changed the bearings. Or mine used to do that before I retensioned the belt. So I'm looking for some help. Um, I've got a five-year-old great-grandson staying with us for a few days. And it reminds me, uh, I'm 81. So he, this little guy, like every little guy, is, hey, Grandpa, why? 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 I never outgrew that. I ask why. And the reason you want to ask why is so you can learn something. I'm not going around acting like I know everything because I certainly don't. So I'm looking for some help. One of my greatest sources, of course, is Scott with my growth rings. And there's a few others, and I'll mention them. I'll put them on the screen because they're an incredible good source of information. They know ShopSmith inside and out. So I'm going to turn this sucker off and remove this cover and see what's going on inside. I will unplug it. So we'll power down, get this out of the way, I like this, good attachment, and we'll be back. Okay, so I've set this up, got everything off of it, I've noticed it just doesn't take anything, it goes from minus 8 to plus 4, just leaning on it, minus 12, minus plus 7. So I set it at minus two, and I'm using the, I'm just going to move it a little bit, four hundredths, three hundredths, 
one hundredths, zero, zero, minus two, minus four, minus three. This is really true. Three hundredths of a millimeter. But I can do this, push on it, plus fifteen, pull back minus thirteen. That doesn't really seem to be a lot. So let's put the adapter on it to go from the 5 eighths to the 1 inch and see what happens. Okay, minus 2, minus 7, minus 7, minus 5, 0, plus 4, plus 6, plus 4, minus 2, minus 7, Minus seven, minus eight, minus seven, minus four. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm pulling and pushing on the back of the thing, the whole mat, the whole matter. So let's see what happens here. Minus ten, plus ten, eleven. So okay, so now let's put the chuck on it. I'll tell you what the chuck is when I put it on there. Okay, so this is the G3. This is what uh, Chopsmith list. Minus 18, minus 25, minus 28, minus 21, minus 8, minus plus 3, minus 1. So. But now you get this far out, minus 43 to plus 8. It's just so minuscule. It kind of tells me that everything is running fairly true. We'll do it again. So minus 8, 0, plus 2, plus 3, plus. One, we're talking about one hundredths of a millimeter. Minus seven hundredths of a millimeter. Minus twenty three. Minus twenty six. Minus twenty eight hundredths. Minus twenty four hundredths. Sixteen, seventeen, six, two, three, zero, one. Running pretty true. Again, you can get some wiggle in it from a minus 24 to a plus 7, 18. So, kind of leaves me with more questions than answers, doesn't it? I'm not going to run it with that on there, obviously. But I'm going to run it without the uh, indicator up against it. Okay, so if you watch it really close, when it starts, watch what happens. It just jumps all over the place. And it's really not running true. You can see the vibration. Watch it again. You can hear it and you can see it. So that takes me to the belts, I think. To the back of the spindle. Because that's pretty solid. And that time it started up nice. I'm going to give you a little bit different angle on this, like the one I'm looking at. See if you can see what I'm seeing. I can feel it, and it's shaking. Something's really weird. So, I guess the point is,
Uh, I'll get back a little bit. I'm going to open it up. I think what I did was I moved it. I zoomed in, yeah. I'm going to open it up and uh, take a look inside, and then I'll get back. And again, I'm just looking for some help. So uh, if you watch this, I hope you can give me some suggestions or uh, pointers. Okay, this is the first time I've taken the cover off. Other than it gets kind of dirty in there, a little dusty, I'll blow that out. But I'm pretty sure this isn't right. Take a look at that upper belt. It's at an angle. It's not running up and down vertically like it should be on the upper pulley. Now, I don't know how much that would do. It's not good for the belt, I'm sure. The upper belt seems to have pretty good tension. But the lower belt doesn't seem to. Let's move this over a little bit so you kind of see the, the lower belt. I'll try and zoom in. I know the light's not the best, but let's see what we can do here. The upper belt is pretty tense. The lower belt, I can move it probably over a quarter of an inch. So I need to kind of know how to get this upper belt where it belongs. I could run a thin piece of metal under it and get it up off the rollers and try and push it over gently. Uh, what do you think? So I'm going to move the camera away and then get the uh, air compressor going and blow all this out, clean it up really good. Uh, again, that run out doesn't tell me much. I haven't figured out yet why it has this tendency to swap around and jerk, unless it's the lower belt tension. It really is a little bit, compared to the upper belt, just pushing on it. You can't use the same... Well, I don't know, maybe it's pretty close. Tension may be okay. It's on the pulley right, the bottom one is, but the upper belt's not. It's at an angle, and you can see the wear on it. So I don't know just how I want to try and get that to come over. I don't know if there's enough slack that I can get away with playing a little game with it to get it over or not. with a thin piece of metal and then try and finesse it back over just a tad. I may try that. See how that works out. Okay, we're looking inside at the lower, lower, at the main thrust on the lower part of the upper belt. I want you to notice, you can see the belt moving. Now you can see that part moving right up against where the bearing is. But as it comes back, the belt's moving and it's not moving. And then, it does move, and then it stops moving. You see it there? You can see the shiny part. I know it's really not as good a focus as I would like. Let's see if we can get a little bit better focus on it. As the boat comes up, it starts, and then it goes again. Not sure if that isn't supposed to be stationary, why is it moving? And then not moving. There it goes. Now it's coming back again. There it goes again, just a little bit. And it's still moving. Now it's moving a lot. Anyway, there's another question. Is that supposed to happen? Okay, as you can see everything's pretty clean. Looking pretty nice in there actually. Heck of a setup. 
but I'm really not happy with that situation there with that bushing moving and not moving come on back baby there we go and this belt being installed crooked and that shows you just how crooked it is it is crooked should not be that way so that's the way it was built I'm kind of holding you responsible shop smith I really am a lot of money I expect better I'm going to kind of pause now and just kind of show you this as I walk back a little bit because I want to put down I'm going to put the names of the people that I use for a source of information on the screen so just kind of a moment of silence here actually I'm never silent I'll close my garage door and uh, just kind of let this go and put these names up starting with, with Scott and I'm trying to remember the other names but I'm 81 years old I'm doing good to remember my own so just keep on reading again thanks for watching if anybody has any information I'm really looking forward to hearing from you I really do really really appreciate all the sources of information I don't see any need to change the bearings on this quill I just don't think that's the problem I don't know what is but it is a problem it just shakes and shakes and shakes when I'm trying to do an inside of a bowl and I'm not talking about a big bowl I'm talking about a small bowl I'm talking about a four inch di NID basically in tight diameter if that and it just runs all over the place and I'm using really sharp tools those carbide that Sears carbide gouge is really really sharp I did both of those the, the walnut and the oak handles and I never sharpened it it's still just as sharp as when I started so I know that's not the problem so anyway enough 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 thanks for watching please leave comments I need to know what's going on and subscribe if you could thanks again kind of an afterthought I don't know if you can really tell or not but you can maybe you can see get a little light on it here it's really rough the way the tool was jumping around in there it's really really rough especially right around the edge anyway that's kind of what I'm dealing with just moving around maybe it's me like I say I'm not that good at it I haven't done it for quite a while but we shall see thanks again